So I also want to thank everyone um, sticking to the end. We still have 120 plus um, on, on, online for the participants and also 35 people watching YouTube. As I mentioned at the very beginning, um, this is obviously our first time to host uh, the CCAT Global Symposium online and because of the COVID-19 pandemic. But I think so far this is a very successful event. As Francine mentioned in the morning, we have 200 plus participants and uh, plus uh, 70, 80 people online watching YouTube. And even to the end, we still have more, a lot of people uh, participating. So um, I hope you learned um, in today's presentation, we discussed many uh, issues from technical challenge, legal reliability issues, um, and security privacy concerns um, to uh, public acceptance, infrastructure support, and uh, I really enjoyed the uh, discussion today. We also have two wonderful um, uh, keynote speakers um, and uh, two uh, very good um, um, uh, presentation uh, from the CCAT researchers. So, um, so um, now we are at uh, 2020 and, and uh, for automated vehicles, uh, starting from really starting from uh, Google's uh, Google car in 2009. I thought uh, we have uh, 10 plus years of development and uh, I like to just to reflect a little bit in terms of um, what we have done as a community and uh, what are the paths, uh, uh, what are the paths forward. And I think today's discussion so far has given us a lot of uh, um, insights in terms of what's happening and now uh, what we are going to do in the future. Um, let me see my... All right. Um, so um, in the past 10 years also, if I put it into um, um, Gartner's um, Hyper, hyper curve on emerging technologies. Um, 2010, that was the first time automated vehicles really appear on this curve. And then uh, 2015, 2016 or ish, and that uh, the, the hype on, on the automated vehicle really reached to the top. Um, 2018, 19 is going down in terms of the hype and people now become very cautious in terms of uh, when really autonomous vehicle will be able uh, to be deployed on the road in a large scale. And I think uh, in the morning, uh, people have, uh, the panel has discussed in terms of the technical challenge uh, and also um, in terms of uh, legal issues, regulatory, regulatory uh, issues and I think realistically, they will take some time for uh, autonomous vehicles to be really on the road uh, in a larger scale. But if you look into any of these um, new technology development, we always have this innovator's dilemma and um, um, the new, uh, the existing technology, the technology always follow the S curve and start very slow and then jump over and then um, uh, start to flat out. And then the new technology, when it's being um, developed, uh, the performance is usually uh, worse than um, um, the existing technology, but uh, if you don't invest those, then um, you're gonna lag behind in terms of new technology. And so, um, so people has, um, uh, have to really invest in the new technology to be a catch in the, uh, catch in the wave. Uh, same thing for autonomous vehicles. What we see autonomous vehicle now uh, in terms of the performance, I think it's um, uh, particularly in terms of automated driving systems. If you look at the driving performance, it's obviously is still uh, like behind in terms of human driven vehicles. Um, but uh, that's what we have to focus. Uh, we have to invest in this uh, particular area to uh, uh, make uh, the leap. So um, this is actually a slide uh, uh, I really like. Um, um, Ed Olson, uh, one of our colleagues uh, 
um, um, uh, at the University of Michigan, also the CEO for the, the startup May Mobility. He looked at uh, in terms of comparison between the automated vehicles versus human driver, uh, human drivers in terms of driving performance. And this is really start uh, the comparison start from roughly 2004 up to 2020, uh, 2019 uh, is when uh, really the time to analyze this performance measure we, uh, uh, in terms of disengagement, whether this is a, a, a good uh, or the best uh, performance measure for the driving performance. Um, it's uh, obviously we can argue for that, but it's just for the sake of uh, this uh, um, um, presentation, that's to say you, if we utilize Disengagement, the number of miles between these disengagements um, uh, for autonomous vehicles. And he, he saw this is um, the number of miles being doubled approximately every about 16 months or so. And that's just between 2004 to year 2019. But if you stretch this out uh, in comparison between um, the human drivers, and we know human drivers in terms of fatality, uh, we, um, uh, the, the, um, the, the rate will be 100 million miles of, about. And then if we, um, if we have this rate of uh, uh, development in terms of the autonomous vehicle technology uh, every 16 months doubled, and then this will, will wait until 2035, uh, even to at the same, even to get to the same level as uh, human driver performance. So it will take some time. It's it's we're not going to expect anything uh, really really soon to be on the road. Um, however, I do think um, uh, we can um, uh, speed it up in terms of um, this uh, deployment of autonomous vehicles or connected automated vehicles. And um, in the past 10 years or so, I think most of the uh, automated vehicle development has been focused on um, the vehicle intelligence. And uh, SAE has classified the vehicle intelligence in terms of level uh, five levels um, and from level one to level five. And a lot of uh, um, um, uh, research and, and development has been focused on this area. Uh, from um, uh, tech companies to OEMs, the uh, and from uh, and to startups, there's a lot of effort on the development of this. And um, I think um, uh, the last panel also alluded to this in terms of in the future, the infrastructure support has to be um, uh, match what we have for autonomous vehicle development. And uh, in the European Union last year has released a report uh, from this project called InfraMix, and they are looking at uh, categorization of uh, the infrastructure level of support for autonomous vehicles, starting from level E to level A. The level E in their support means that uh, basically no infrastructure support, and that's, your, that's essentially for most of, the, most of the infrastructure what we have today. And level D is the static information. Um, you have that uh, dig static digital map uh, with static science information and things like that. Level C, providing dynamic information to, to the automated vehicles, um, including verbal message sign, you know, um, um, uh, instant and weather information and things like that. Level B is a jump, uh, is a jump. Um, level B means that they will provide the autonomous vehicle with uh, macroscopic traffic situation and uh, so that uh, we can uh, cooperatively looking at uh, the traffic, traffic environment, so cooperative sensing. And level A is cooperative driving, so that's the highest level in terms of the infrastructure support. And uh, when uh, this has been um, discussed, um, and there was always a, a question that uh, where does money come from? And this obviously involves a lot of infrastructure investment and, and uh, 
um, uh, it's very difficult to come uh, with, uh, um, uh, with this large investment on the infrastructure. But I think in the future, that for the cooperative transportation system, um, the ecosystem is, is changing. There's new um, um, uh, industry is emerging. Uh, Scar Shogun actually alluded to it in the last panel in terms of the data services. So um, uh, if you look at uh, the, the current ecosystem, really is starting from the end user to uh, purchase vehicles and uh, operate that vehicle on the road. And in, uh, we already see mobility service like Uber, Lyft, and uh, uh, communication services uh, is to a certain extent is already there um, uh, uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, the cell phone services. But I think in the future uh, with, um, with 5Gs and CV2X, and uh, 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 we will see more and more um, uh, investment on the infrastructure and then uh, the support from infrastructure in terms of the data, the necessary macroscopic situational awareness data, and uh, even to a certain extent, uh, uh, cooperative driving will be there. So um, I, I think in the future, this new industry, or uh, new, um, uh, 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 a, a new set of companies that can provide a cooperative system data service uh, are emerging and that, I think that's an area really deserve a lot of investment. And I also realized that uh, just recently MDOT has released uh, a new RFP um, um, connected automated vehicle corridor um, uh, calling for a master developer on such corridors to support um, uh, uh, automated vehicle, uh, connect automated vehicle deployment. And I think that's a very, very smart move. And um, in the future, not just for, to support automated vehicles, it's, it's important not just, uh, it's not only to, uh, to provide, uh, you know, better lane markings and signs, it's also important to provide uh, 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 useful data um, uh, uh, car operative sensing, car operative, car operative driving data to uh, to automated vehicles. So um, I, I think in the future, not only for the smart transportation system, not only we will have smart trailers, smart vehicles, smart roads, smart cloud, and all these things together, and it will be what we call the smart transportation systems. So, um, so, so that's my last slides in terms of uh, my um, um, uh, sort of hindsight uh, related with last 10 years with uh, connected automated vehicle technical development. And uh, um, the last two things I want to mention, uh, one is uh, we do have one special seminar uh, will be presented by uh, Professor Su Chen Shen from the industry and uh, from industrial and operations engineering department uh, of University of Michigan, and she's going to discuss uh, transportation and logistics um, uh, in a COVID-19 era. I think this is a very timely topic, and uh, you can register for the seminar at uh, uh, CCAT uh, hyphen uh, COVID uh, uh, dot uh, event. Bright.com. Uh, and last, not the least, uh, I really want to thank uh, the CDAF, uh, CCAT staff members, um, Kevin and Debbie and, and Francine, uh, for putting together this online event. Uh, we were hesitant at the, at the very beginning when, when we uh, have uh, uh, the situation at, uh, well, but uh, eventually we were able to uh, move uh, this uh, two days uh, uh, in-person uh, event into uh, a one-day um, online event. And I, I think this is very successful and uh, hopefully you all uh, learn from it. I want to uh, give them uh, a virtual round of applause. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope, uh, uh, we we'll see you um, in next year's CCAT uh, Global Symposium. Again, thank you. And this concludes uh, today's uh, uh, Global Symposium. Thank you very much.